Today I wanted to come to you all with a brief message, a um, necessary message, but a very brief message. Today I wanted to go to a very popular scripture that we all know, that we've all probably referenced or heard someone reference at some time in our life, depending on how you were raised and if you were a part of the church culture and the church upbringing, you've probably heard someone uh, give out this particular scripture. We're going to go to uh, Isaiah chapter 64. We're going to start at verse 7 and then we'll go to verse, we're going to read 7 and 8. So this should be pretty brief. Verse 7 says, And there is none that calleth upon thy name, that stirreth up himself to take hold of thee. For thou hast hid thy face from us and hast consumed us because of our iniquities. So it says that God will uh, hide his face from us. Um, you know, if we partake in sin. Uh, and then verse 8 says, But now, O Lord, thou art our father, we are the clay, and thou art thou art potter, and we are all the work of your hand. So, Jesus Christ wants to come and, and shape and mold us into something. A lot of us, we've let the world sculpt us and make us into something. And Jesus has to come. And any of you that have, have, have that do pottery or have ever, ever done pottery, you know that pottery, um, whenever you want to uh, do away with that shape or whatever that 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 um, that item is that you created, you have to uh, you have to put water on it, and then the water softens it. And you have to ground it, and you have to break it down, uh, and it, it softens it. A lot of us have become so hardened in our hearts and hardened in our, our in our in our minds that the, the gospel just can't penetrate through the the Holy Spirit wants to get in and Holy Spirit wants to move but there's so much evil that the Holy Spirit can't move it can't maneuver inside of us it can't really be impactful and it can't really transform us because that sin is causing the Holy Ghost to be constricted and it can't really move and it can't really spread and uh, do what it really wants to do but we have to ask God to, to soften our hearts and, and, and allow us to be sensitive to his word so we can receive it in our minds, receive it in our hearts, receive it in our, our very soul of us. Because that's the devil's uh, job and that's his mission every day in you and I life is to, to, to get a hold of our soul so he can start to change our very personality and, and, change, our per and uh, change our view and our, our viewpoint of how we receive God. But that's very important that that scripture is we have to understand that Jesus Christ wants to he wants to get a hold of us and he wants us to be like putty in his hands because in doing that we're softened to the point that he can begin to re-sculpt us and remake us into something beautiful and as he and as we continue to grow in the Lord and, and prove ourselves more submissive and more available to the Lord and we're hearkening unto his voice then we will notice that he'll continue to add on he'll continue to to uh, define our very personality and define our very life of Christ by continuing to add more and more to that that that, uh, that sculpture that He's made us into, even if we, and just to um, cross reference the scripture and add on to that that scripture of the potter and the clay. If we go to um, Ephesians chapter two verse ten, it talks about uh, that we are His workmanship. So Christ wants to Christ wants to get a hold of us, but we have to understand that Christ doesn't want to add himself on to the life that or the very person that we already are. He wants to be the very creator and the sustainer of this new life that he's introduced to us and that we've accepted. And by doing that, and to do that, we have to understand the importance of the word, hearing the word, receiving the word, understanding the word, and then with understanding it, we can live it out by obeying the word. And that's what um, God wants us to do. And uh, even if we go to Jeremiah 32 and 40, it says, uh, he said, I will put my fear into their hearts that they shall not depart from me. So if we let God make us over and, and truly um, be all that he wants to be and be uh, allow ourselves to be submitted, to be broken down and to be rebuilt up and re-sculpted into something, then he will put his fear in our hearts. That way we will, we will come before the, the throne of grace kneeling and, and, and asking for more of him. Understanding that prayer says, I'm not in control of my life. That's why we pray. 
that's why we continue to submit ourselves to the Lord because that's a that's an um, that's a confession and that's a revealing of our revealing to us that we're not in control of our lives. That Christ is in control. He's the, the creator of the heavens and the earth. He is the creator of the universe. And because he created us, he has the, he has the power over our lives. And he wants to give us the power over ourselves so we can live out the gospel correctly. And live out the gospel to where we can make other people live out the gospel. He wants to reconcile. He wants to be the reconciliation of us back to God so the spirit of God can truly rest and breathe upon our lives but we we have to understand that we have to be completely broke down so he can build us up again you know a lot of us think that through our, our well-learned behaviors and through the life that we have come to know without God we can simply still be that same person still have that mentality still have those behaviors still be that very same person and Jesus Christ will just impart himself into who we already are but it we will find that if we don't um, submit ourselves to the Lord um, and we continue to be proud and prideful in our walk like we don't like when we go in the house of God we don't need to raise our hands up through praise and worship and truly give honor and reverence to him we're sitting in there looking to the left and to the right seeing who's looking at us we're looking at the person who's singing and saying because that person is singing i'm not going to sing along i'm not going to receive the the word into my heart i'm not going to receive these songs into my heart because i have an issue with who the speaker is i'm not going to receive it into my heart see he wants us operating in pride like that but as it says in james 4 and 8 um is it james 4 and 8 um let me see um James 4 and 8 but it is in the book of James the scripture says that he will give grace to the humble but he resisted the proud so we have to understand that if we come come into the house of God or we come into the presence of God prideful we don't really want to uh, focus on that very moment of, of really receiving him and really hearing what he has for us see we, we worry about what everybody else is doing in their lives because we're not worried about what God is doing you know, when people are really living for God and they're really hearing from God, they're going to tell you what God is, is, has, has told them. They're going to be living out what God has gave them the, the God-given ability to do, which is to, to, to run away from sin and to go and set the captives free and to, to really be a, a true representation, a true manifestation of the gospel for all of the, the brothers and sisters in the faith and out of the faith. But if we live a life to where we're prideful in how we worship God, we're prideful in how we live, we think that the world and everyone owes us something instead of the fact that God wants us to, to go out and he gives us blessings and he gives us things so we can give to others, then we're going to find ourselves in opposition with God. And being in opposition with God will put us in a place to where um, we can't receive all that he has for us. So that's the message I wanted to give to you all today is God wants to be the potter and he wants us to be the clay. So submit yourselves to him so you can be the clay. If you have not completely been broken down and grinded, then ask the Lord to, to deal with you. Act, go to the Lord humbly, humbly yourself and ask him to, to truly make you over it and truly put his hand on you and in your life so he can, can sculpt and make up your life in the way he wants it to be. Because... We can, we can think we're happy with the things that we have in life, but the real and true happiness comes from knowing him and having more of him, not more of things. So this is your brother Melvin, and God bless you all, and thank you again for stopping by.